Everybody, welcome, 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 welcome. Axes and Knowles presented by the venerable, the number one in FSU sports information and entertainment, Knowles247.com. I'm here with my two usual compadres, Coach Adam Brown, Kevin Little, but now we also got Brendan Sinone to talk about Florida State transfer portal quarterback commit DJ Uyunglele from Oregon State University. It's going to be fun. Uh, Brennan and I talked about it today on on the bench. A lot of the things that he does well, or a lot of things that Mike Norvell values, and I think this is going to be an interesting episode because Adam can talk about how he's going to fit maybe as as a piece of the running game, how he's going to complement the overall offense. Brendan can talk about all of the good things and all of the things to get excited about. And Kev, I think, can will provide a nice, I don't know if I want to say a dissenting opinion, but on this show, the show has been in its inception for what, guys? We've been doing triple option X's and Knowles for what, three years now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, since about right. Kevin, as the tape machines will show, has not always had the kindest opinions of Mr. DJ Uyunglele. Yeah, they that he, up if they want when it. he was a, <laughs> When he was a when he was a Clemson quarterback. Now he did the Corvallis rehabilitation tour. And I think, at least from when I was speaking to Brendan today, I'm pretty excited about this. I think Kevin is too, but I think you have what, what do you think of his if of your opinion of him as a player, Kev? I want to get your we're gonna go through some stats and then we're gonna let the film talk as we are wont to do on this show. But what do you think about DJ as a player? Well, firstly, I, I wanted to be kind of skeptical because you see these East Coast guys, these guys that struggled a little bit on the East Coast, Michael Penix, uh, DJ Uyunglele, and I, I nailed it, uh, and and Bo Nix, and then they go out in the West Coast, and they're all of a sudden all three All Stars, and I thought that was kind of a fishy coincidence, um, mm. and maybe Conspiracy. maybe these aren't all all they're made up to be. You know, we we've seen enough DJ that it made me kind of start questioning it, and um. To be fair, to be fair to that argument, the West Coast teams have come out, you know, and kind of done their business this bowl season. You know, Oregon blew out Liberty. Bo Nix looked good. Uh, Michael Penix looked every bit as much as his hype warranted um, last night. And so there might be something to it. But this is this is this is the main argument against DJ. So whenever you see anything about DJ, uh, I've got it in chart form and kind of comparing you know, DJ to, you know, Jordan Travis, kind of a direct one-to-one comparison in the passing game. Sure. So along the the y-axis here, I have air yards per attempt. So obviously as the air yards go up, um, you're going to see on the x-axis, the inaccuracy tends to go up, right? There's some correlation that the further you throw the ball on average, the more likely you are to be inaccurate according to PFF. Sure. But you see a pretty dramatic difference. Jordan Travis is sitting at about 11% inaccurate rate, whereas DJ is closer to 18, 19. That's a pretty significant difference. And this was this past year. Um, And so when you're looking at the two, the thing you've got to worry about is, is DJ going to be able to be accurate for you consistently throughout the stretch of the season? Are there, is there a particular type of throw that is like his problem area? Is it, because the air yards per attempt are pretty similar. Jordan's what, just a shade under 10 and DJ's probably like what? 10 and a half, almost 11. Yeah. Is there a particular type of throw that like, I don't know if it's stuff over the middle, outbreaking routes, things that you've noticed watching him that he struggles with sometimes. Cause he hits the big throws like, and we're going to see during the film, the kid can drop some absolute bombs, but is there something that is consistently troublesome for him? Yeah, I, I think he doesn't do a good job of throwing off platform. So if there's a little bit of pressure in his face, I, I don't think he I don't if he can't time his footwork with his windup, he, you know, everybody kind of knows he's a l- little bit longer of a windup. The mm-hmm. things get kind of off and he'll has a tendency to kind of ground some balls um, and air balls. So I I think it's less about like specific kinds of throws and more about like, can you give him a clean pocket or can you work on him being able to throw the ball? not in perfect situations. And and we've seen that with Jordan Travis and other quarterbacks on the roster, that that's a point of emphasis. And and I'd say too, if there was a coaching staff, uh, Adam, that, that will be able to help improve that facet of the game. Obviously DJ's just got one year of eligibility left. I don't want to say he's a finished product, but if there's something that they can polish up, 
the masterful work that Norvell and Toe Cars and Kenny Dillingham before him did with Jordan Travis, getting his upper and lower body in sync. It was really a mess before that. I think that they can, I think that they're going to be able to help DJ. And I think we are going to see an improvement in that inaccuracy rate. This even, even after only one off season and one year of work or, or do you agree? Um, well, I think Brendan has a fun little uh, chart. I'm going to pull up here in a second for him. I don't know if I agree with that statement. Uh, I don't think at this point in his career, I think he kind of is what he is. Uh, okay. And a lot of his inaccuracy, you know, the thing that that chart doesn't capture is that a lot of his inaccuracy comes from the longer delivery. The ball tends to be, it tends to be behind where it needs to be or, or late getting to a spot because of how, just how long his motion is. Um, I'm very anxious to kind of see what they, how they tailor the offense to him. I thought Oregon State did a great job of really kind of building their offense around DJ, as opposed to what Clemson did with him, which was just run their offense. Um, you know, let him let him throw the ball on in breaking routes, crossers, uh, let him put his back foot in the dirt off of play action. Just thought they did a really nice job of allowing him to kind of flourish. And allow him kind of shine and focus on the throws that he's really good at. Um, so I, I'm curious to see what Mike does with that. I, I mean, I wouldn't. I, I don't think you're going to change a whole lot for him. Motion's long; it's not going to get shorter. Um, if somebody could have shortened it, they would have shortened it already. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Clemson knew it was long. Oregon State knew it was long. They would have. They would have fixed it. But he's comfortable with it. You, you they're going. You're going to coach around it. Um, you're going to do things to. To, you're going to focus on other areas to coach around that that length. You know the upside is he's not going to get sacked easily. I mean, this is a he's a know, horse, people, dude. Yeah, he's a <laughs> he, he's a horse back there in the pocket. He's a 250 pound quarterback that he's going to break arm tackles. He's going to step out of he's going to step out of hits and away from and away from rushers and do things. Um, and he's going to add to your running game, uh, hopefully. So you know there there's there's pros and cons there, uh, but no, I don't I don't expect. That you're going to do a lot. Are they going to do some off-platform platform work with him? I'm sure. Are we going to see it in games? Probably not, because we would have seen it already. There would have been evidence of it. Everybody's working that stuff. Uh, it's well, it's he has improved. To be fair, yeah, absolutely. From, yeah, the, yeah, he's, yeah, he's not, improved I'm not a lot. saying that as yeah. a slight to him. I'm sure. saying that, like, at this just at this point in his career, I don't think you you can expect to see drastic changes. Uh, we argue quite a bit. I remember the talking point with uh, Jordan was that Jordan was never going to improve. You can't change his mechanics. You can't mm -hmm. change a quarterback's mechanics. But Jordan was very young at that point when they were they were doing this work with him. I mean, you're talking about DJ's what a fifth year guy now. Um, yeah, that, that's it's just a different ball game. Uh, he's he's farther along in his career. He's had a ton of success winning football games and throwing the football with what he does. I don't see a great need to change it. I see a great need to focus on his strengths and play to them. And Brendan, let's bring up that other graph that you talked about. Cause there are those things like some of the spot inaccuracy, the long throwing motion, but there is a benefit is that kid has got tremendous arm strength. He's got tremendous arm talent. Adam, we have this, this chart doesn't even get into like the running game help that he's going to provide. But Brendan, what are we looking at here in this little battle of a uh, chart warfare between yeah, you and Kevin? Nerd on nerd crime. It is. Here. This is this is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so this is an example. Unlike Kev's chart, which top right quadrant was bad in his, which is not how we do it, Kev. I'm very disappointed. Oh, in you. Top right, the quadrant. chart itself was <laughs> At least you really the name. Hard. in this chart. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Brendan. So what we have here is air yards and then uh, air yards per attempt and then uh, passing uh, EPA expected points added. And he's in the top right quadrant, which is coveted, uh, further skewed towards air yards per attempt, which Kev was looking at the air yards too. DJ Uangale likes to, to throw the ball deep. I mean, that's, that's the strength of his arm strength, velocity, able to push the ball downfield. So this kind of shows that. Then it just shows the EPA shows efficiency uh, and how productive he's. He's being in, a, in just a different type of statistical form, but it shows where he's at. And he's what I thought was interesting, really close to Jordan Travis, both with the air yards, then the EPA uh, passing the football. So uh, I think what, what I'm trying to say here is that there's a lot of stats, a lot of metrics out there that'll show that the two are kind of comparable in a lot of ways. I think Jordan had better pure passing numbers, but in terms of when you start looking into efficiencies and things like that, uh, DJU actually was, was pretty close. I think so much of it was from uh, the offensive system that, 
that Kevin and AB laid out. That it really helped him out. Oregon State did an awesome job tailoring the offense to DJ's strengths. A lot of play action stuff. Um, fed off of a really nice running attack. But um, but yeah, I, I think this shows that the the strengths that we're going to look at here this evening that he can get the ball downfield and. Uh, he does that at a high enough rate to where it really helps out his efficiency numbers, even if some of the accuracy down and down stuff isn't super uh, robust. And I'll be honest with you, it's pretty encouraging that you can go from one of like the five to seven best quarterbacks in the history of this like really, really good football program. And you're going to a direct successor in a year with a lot of youth to where the year to year production, you're not really missing much as far as like ESPN's like QBR. I think Jordan Travis was at 13th this year and DJ Uyunglele was like 12th. So the fact that you could go from Jordan Travis to DJ, it's going to look, it's going to look different in some areas, but you're not really missing a beat too much on production, assuming that Florida state can utilize his strengths in a way that Oregon state was able to, which I, I think they will especially with the better talent surrounding him at FSU compared to OSU. That's, that's, a, that's a heck of a haul in the transfer portal, man. So I'm excited, Kev. Any any other points you guys want to get to as we get into the film? I think that we have some all 22 of a game that's very familiar to Florida State fans, which is why the, if you didn't watch a lot of Oregon State, I understand. But the last time you watched this kid play you, like he, he had a pretty – Pretty awesome game, and I think that's what you got cooked up for us here, right, Kev? Yeah, real quick, I did want to like add to AB's point. Here's some pressure statistics. Um, so 19th lowest sack rate in the country on Oof. DJU. Um, so that's pretty good, 3.4%. Um, and he got blitzed a whole lot, 38% blitz rate. So they, they were coming for him. Uh, didn't get sacked very often. Had a relatively okay time to throw. Uh, but the offensive line wasn't that impressive. So yards per, before contact per rush, 2.11, 92nd in the country. It's not like they were a dominant offensive line, and yet he was still able to to keep up a, a really, really respectable sack rate. And so uh, I, I think that that is, that is a pro that needs to be talked about, and um, there's some stats to back it up. Is that due to – because I haven't seen a, t- a ton of his game before this other than the Florida mm-hmm. State stuff. Is that because of his, like, escapability in the pocket, or is that just because he's impossible to bring down as, like, a fully formed man made of, like, Polynesian lava rock? <laughs> like, why? Um, like, he, or do people bounce off of him like he's made of adamantium, or is he, is he got a little <laughs> wiggle to his game? Uh, so the average time to throw is pretty low, so 33rd. Uh, so he, he got rid of the ball – relatively quickly at Oregon state. Uh, it's hard to know if that's going to translate to a different system. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it's a mixture of getting rid of the ball and, and being at least, I, I think he's w- smart enough and, and big enough to kind of get some yardage when he sees things breaking down. Right. So I, I think instead of sacks, what you'll see is him kind of fall forward a yard or two, which we can kind of play another down. We really could, man. Like the, just eliminating some of those negative plays. I can't wait to get the film on here. Oh, there's a little heat map, Brendan. What do we, Brendan? What do you see here, Brendan? Adam, I whoever wants. I have this. no idea what. I mean, uh, it looks pretty good. Slants, uh, in breaking routes, digs. Um, it screams. Down, it screams RPO. Level. It screams. Um, play, play action. action stuff off of play action. Yeah, I think. And I think we'll see that bear out. Well, if we were watching Oregon State, we're going to watch him play against. We're gonna watch him in the Florida State game, but we we have a video up with, with him and Cam Ward uh, that posted earlier. <laughs> That's great. That's a great comment. Um, we have a video up of of uh, DJ playing in a uh, Oregon State game, and we'll probably take a look at some more Oregon State stuff. But I mean, you see vertical balls down the sideline. It's I mean, everywhere, dude. That's a Mike tough offense. That's a tough. That's a tough quarterback to defend. Because the, there isn't like a real area of weakness, and to me that that heat map, I wonder how much that lines up with like a Jordan Travis heat map. Because take the take the center out, and it's Jordan Travis. I was going to say even, even Jordan's <laughs> was even more dramatically skewed to the outside. Of course, when you're dealing with Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman, that makes sense. But this, yeah, it, this is like a Mike Norvell quarterback, man. I'm very, I, I think he fits really well, and I'm interested if they're going to do how they're going to utilize 
how Oregon State was able to translate? Or will they do a lot more just like straight play action? Will they kind of lean on the RPO elements of the Norvell offense? Jordan Travis, we noticed it a lot of just straight drop back stuff. And I don't know if that 100% works as well with DJ. I think just anything to get some of that hesitation to kind of unlock that. I'm, I'm interested to see what Mike's going to do with him when the blueprint for his success is so apparent. But anyway, let's throw on that film. Roll that beautiful beam footage. Oh, Levi. Sorry, buddy. All right, this is from 2021, right? Yeah, so this this is the game at Florida State two years ago. Um, yeah. Just a play some action right commentary. There. Some elite commentary tonight in the chat. Well, good for that, man. Everybody's feeling it. Yeah, so this is just a, a, a play action. I, I think this is kind of pretty standard stuff for w- what you expect. People respect the the read option run game, so uh, DJ is a running threat. So you see both uh, both these guys, one for the running back, one for the quarterback, kind of having to respect them, and that kind of opens up the easy completion. Yeah, and you see an accuracy issue. The ball's behind; it needs to be out in yep. front. Let's catch the ball, show some touch. Also, twenty twenty two game. Okay, mm-hmm. I've lost track of years. Me too, dude. December, December was, was long. Years. <laughs> December was the war- football equivalent of hell. So he pulls this one. Eagles freaking lost every game. Yeah. <laughs> AB was not in a good mood. So what? a lot of people said that the Clemson offense didn't do him any favors. Why, why is that? And there's been a lot made of that. What, what do you guys think about that? Really poorly coached. I How? Think, I don't think that there was a lot of focus on any of the little stuff. I mean, I don't. I don't think they knew how to – again, I think that they they take the mindset of we have a system, you're going to fit our system no matter what, as opposed to we're going to work to your strengths and we're going to try to make the best of what we've got that we have in our system and fit it to what you do best. Sure. Okay. It's very Good much, stuff. no, we're going to do what we do and you're going to It's rigid. It. It's very yes. rigid. Okay. Yeah, Here, here's just a – kind of inverted read inverted here where he's the inside guy he makes the right decision to pull it. Malcolm Ray makes a good play. And he oh, fall- I guess that's Cooper. Yeah. Yeah, but he falls forward like you guys mm-hmm. said, right? Gets gets yeah. that yard or two. And he didn't do as much of that with him at Oregon State. Um, not quite as much design run stuff. And, and we know that that's a, somewhat of a staple for Clemson, but You've got to hope that you see a little bit more of that uh, at Florida State because it's a strength of his. I mean, it's something he does well. And it'll help you out your running game as a whole, right, Adam? Big, big time. Big time. They've got to they've got to get back to being able to run counter successfully and kind of create that staple of their offense, that bread and butter, so to speak, of their offense with that play and then build off of it. Oof. They lacked that this year. I mean, well, the offense was good. It's not to say it wasn't good, but. They they missed that ability to line up and just run counter. Yeah, so this is this is just like a, a, a slot fade or slot out uh kind of route combination here. Pretty straightforward. Uh I guess he's seeing this one on one out here, taking a shot. Good coverage on the other guys well, too, over. though, right? Yeah, I mean that that wide receiver. There was no separation there. So that that was honestly probably a pre-snap read. That, that was probably something they wanted to take if they got it. Um, but yeah, you see the wind up here a little bit that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. That immediate, he immediately goes down. And so that, that, that's something that he has to work within. AB, AB was right. At this point in his career, that's just not something that you you can spend that much time messing with. See how his arm is down and pretty much straight off off the bat slows down the motion. It kind of messes with timing sometimes. A little but, high, but it's more of a coverage thing than anything. I think his yeah. feet get stuck a little bit. His front foot looks it looks a little a little stuck here. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Coaches, uh, you guys are no better than I, but like quarterback coaches normally don't touch like upper body mechanics, right? It's more footwork and yeah, you know, at this level, definitely. at this point, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it kind of is what it is. Yeah, I think you can get it more in sync a little bit. I mean, 
which they've, he, I'm sure the other two guys at Oregon State, John Smith is a really good coach. They've been working on that as well. I, again, I just, he's comfortable with what he does. Like, oh, no, don't change it. Yeah, there's no yeah, point in changing he, it. You can he, clean up, you can clean it up. It, you, you're not going to, you don't want to change it at this point. The dude's a very successful, he's like a yeah. arguable top 20, top 15 quarterback in the game. Yeah, it, it it's funny, like kind of some of the consternation with the fan base going into like the recruitment of him. And I think there's just this like perception of what he was at Clemson, especially early on. But like the further removed he gets having success at Oregon State and seeing what Clemson did with Clay, Cade Klubnick this past year, like I think it kind of looks better for DJ uh, the further so he gets too. removed from it. And, um, to be, and to be honest with you, I, I understand evaluating him in like a vacuum of like – what what quality of player he is but there's also you gotta the stuff that he does mike loves to do <laughs> like, well. yeah 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 mike wants to push the ball vertically um and and dj's arm is pretty elite close to it at least you like to see they can do this stuff i mean you, you when we're talking about guys with a little bit longer uh motions you wonder okay can they get the can they catch and throw and do that kind of stuff and he throws a pretty accurate ball there on that the flare route yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a component. That's a component with the Norvell offense with guys like Toa Feely coming out of the backfield, weren't running the wide receiver screens, things like that. You can see the attention that he gets in the running game, threat to pull. Something that I mean, we didn't really get a lot of a lot of respect for Jordan Travis in the running well, game this year. We knew that they were worried about Jordan getting hurt in the run game. Mm -hmm. He takes a lot of big hits and he's not the biggest guy. I mean, are we all of like mind that they will be more willing to include DJ in the run game than they were with Jordan. They I, should. I, I shared this with Trey on OTB earlier. I had someone in the program tell me that uh, they will, uh, they felt like they will oh never my. not get a fourth and one with DJ just because they know what he can do as a short yard. Yeah. I love that so mindset. I love this throw here, man. Yeah. Kevin Knowles with the bad, bad route, but, um, D did does a good job slipping under it. Good awareness. I mean, there's the yeah. I mean, there's there's the toughness. I mean, maybe the smaller guy kind of gets impacted by that rush. Uh, it's a great one, but dude, and with with being rushed and having to step up in the pocket and make a quick adjustment, he launches this ball, man. Yeah, it's a forty yard throw. Yeah, plus For, forty plus yard in air. Without yeah, without really getting to step into it much. Yeah, he doesn't so. really get to. He kind of just does. That's all arm strength. Look at that! Look at that <laughs> freaking pineapple cannon he's got. That is insane, <laughs> dude. Like, and we Jordan was a great deep ball thrower this year, but on the ones that he missed, he underthrew it. I'm yeah. not. I ain't worried about that with this kid. Yeah, it, it definitely opens up the top of the defense, right? So, you're talking about. Now teams have to keep two safeties back. They have to keep those safeties, you know, conservative if you have receivers that can win over the top. I do think that was a problem with both Oregon State and Clemson is that they really didn't have too many guys that just were going to burn you over the top. And that kind of brings up Brendan was making a point where if you look at the transfer portal, we talked about it today, that there seems to be an emphasis on speed on the on the wide receivers that they're looking to bring in. Right, Brendan? Yeah, they have a couple of guys that are already slated to come in. Uh, Jabari Barber from uh, from Troy's one of them. Um, I'm blanking on the FAU wide receiver's name, but both are like undersized guys. Le Johnny really. something. Le Johnny. Um, blanking on the last. Uh, Le Hester. Uh, no, not Hester. Le um, Weber Weber starts with a W. Um, that's not. This is not. Young good. Jamie, look that up. Anyway, <laughs> um, um, Wester. Someone has seen Wester. Okay. Uh, so you were right. Um, but those are two fast guys, push the ball downfield or can catch the ball, you know, with, with it getting pushed downfield. Uh, and then Evan Stewart's the name that's been kind of bantied about uh, as a potential visiting candidate. We will see a Texas A&M transfer again, dynamic speed. Uh, people have mentioned the Oregon state wide receiver uh, who's officially entered as well. I, I think we'll Silas see. Bolden. I think yeah, is that's it. Uh, Bolden, and we'll see if he ends up. But like these are all kind of guys in a similar mold, uh, and I think that's if you're Florida State, you're looking for. When Mike Norvell's offenses were at their best at Memphis, they had a vertical threat, like an elite Wait vertical threat, at least someone to uh, mm -hmm. force the defense to respect you. So it makes sense it fits with DJU's strengths. Way to hang in the pocket, right, Kev? Yeah, to me, this is when when people ask me how to get excited about DJ. Like, what what is what is his what does he bring to the game? 
more so than that last clip, this is this is what I think is his upside. I think this is if you can hone this, if you can get this particular throw down. I mean, how, how many Brendan's in practice? And I, I know we're not supposed to talk too much scheme related, but like they work back shoulder fades. This is part of their offense. This is what they want to do. And he does this in rhythm, that excess arm strength when he can step into the throw allows him to be have that accuracy downfield and deliver a good ball. It's indefensible with really good coverage. Like, look at that. That's that's a tough throw, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's Colorado level coverage, and I'm not sure that. Sorry, that was a... <laughs> you talking. You talking about the buffs there? <laughs> it's, no, it's... it's Cooper. Oh, oh, Cooper. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he looked pretty good in that rep. <laughs> I, I'm with you though, and it's funny because they we we saw in the ball we saw in the exhibition in Miami that uh, Brock missed a couple of those back shoulders. Some of that was a communication issues, but yeah, it's an emphasis of the offense. And then he still don't go down easy. No, he doesn't. Hey, here's the thing: like they saw so much man coverage this year, specifically a lot of cover one man. If if DJ is going to be used in the run game, you're going to run teams out of that, and that's encouraging to me more than anything. Yeah, uh, we'll see it later in the game where, where Florida State runs in man. I mean, th- this isn't necessarily man. It's it's kind of a match quarters look. Mm-hmm. But in essence, this, yeah, this, man, is, man look. this is one thing that you need him to be better at. Um, you need him to see the matchups, know the matchups, know that this is a, effectively going to turn into man when it crosses midfield and know that you're slot receiver on a safety on a crossing route is a matchup you need to take and you need to deliver this ball now. And Jordan did. He would immediately identify those one-on-one matchups, sometimes to the consternation of fans. But yeah, like with Jordan, that's probably already out by now. Or alternatively, I mean, you could drive on this post, you know? Does it? The, the, you have places to go here. So th- this is something that, while while you can't fix the mechanics, that's something that can be fixed. There's no need for that to be a sack. And I'd say with that improved sack rate that you guys showed, I think that that's something he's gotten better at. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think this is a normal occurrence. I think he was looking for something, but yeah, well he, dude, he was locked into his right for sure. Right. You can see that from that angle right there. Here, Trey, we had you covered. Oh, not the middle eight. I hate the middle (laughs) eights. We got 27 minutes into this before we got a 63 to three in the comments. So that was yeah, that idiot's going. They know, bro. They know. <laughs> it, ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't hunting today, brother. <laughs> I'm so proud of our fan base, dude. We're just not even shutting up. It's they so rallied awesome. the troops. They're the best. Oh, Florida impressive. State fans are the best, dude. They know. They knew that bowl game, that orange bowl was fake. I think, tr- I think uh, AB just uh, banned the wrong person. No. Oh. Sorry, Bill. Bill oh, William go. Green? Oh, he's he, my guy's unhinged. No, in the that's comment. the right guy. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Sorry, Bill. Let's see, can I unban him? You're back. <laughs> Let's figure it. Kevin Bill. Kevin. Oh no, Bill. Oh no, Mr. Bill. It's good. All right. So here record. so here's something. What is this? Third and let's get the time. Second uh, and sixteen. I don't think this is second and 16. There we go. Third and two. Okay. All right. So they're doing quarterback power to Brendan's point. They didn't feel like they're, they're not going to be able to get a, a third or fourth and short. They don't get this one. Good penetration in the backfield though. Look, he doesn't go down easy again. Yeah, right. He still gets positive yards. One, two. What are we, what are we running? <laughs> I don't know, man. You're right about Clemson's offense, dude. <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing? They're getting cute. Just get downhill. Oh, just, just stupidity. Yeah, they have Will Shipley and DJ Wongolay at this point. You Good really play, need to fake all man. that? Come on, bro. I believe he gets it in this next next play, though. It's a lot of Colorado guys on this defense. Kep is right. Oh, it's unsettling. <laughs> well, look at that. He gets it on fourth and short, right, Brendan? Yep. Oh, it's gonna be a hundred percent. If they hey, if they if they ever don't get it on fourth and one, you come yell at me. It's fine. Oh, yeah. You don't get you don't get yelled at oh, enough by boy. people online, there dude. We go. 
But let's look at this. Well, Adam, running game wise, how how was this missing from Florida State last year? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, me too. I just want you to. I want to hear you say it. Like, yeah, thousand percent. I mean, <laughs> was it missing? Would it have like made the running game exponentially better? I mean, it would have helped. And we saw in the fourth quarter against Duke, where Jordan taking off and running it changed everything. Would have would have helped them. Um, Another quick do, throw. Do I think it? Do I think it may, would have made counter like? Uh, uh, their bread and butter play again? Probably not because they couldn't block at the second level this year. Um, they really struggled specifically tight end and tackle when they had to work to the second level. They struggled to get a hold of guys. And do I think the quarterback run game would have helped some? Yeah, would have maybe slowed some of that pursuit down. But do I think it was the savior? No. No, I would have liked to see from that play that we saw like maybe like five, ten minutes ago, being able to get some hesitation hesitation from those safeties in the run fits, maybe having a guy 100% dedicated to the quarterback. I guess they had that anyway, but. Yeah. Was, was, yeah. I think the biggest thing for me is Oof, will, yeah, he take, will he take the runs that become available to him when he his back foot hits the dirt and he doesn't know where to go with the ball or – it's or it's matched up with. Will he take those? Because Jordan didn't take those this year. Is that dropped? Holy hell! I think it was, it was behind, behind him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah you can see angle. turning. Um. Yeah, maybe we'll get a better view of it. This is. This is. They were getting all cute with with the toss stuff, and then. Yeah. You know they, they put they, him in a bad angle here to throw this ball too. It, it's got to be behind. Or else it's going to yeah, the the safety's going to have a shot at it. Yeah, that's why I love the all twenty-two stuff. Yeah, it's all, oh, dude, <laughs> you set him up for the old Austin Collie shot. I I still think he could throw a little bit better of a ball there, but you know, I don't disagree. But it, his thought process is in the right place. I think the play maybe just takes a little bit long, and that's where the long uh, motion puts it a little bit farther behind than it needs to be. In the flats, though, so far watching this game, it hasn't been an issue so far yet. That's the first inaccurate ball I can think of. Like this, that. this is what I this is what we need to see more of. Like from from the offense this year. Brendan, can you bring up stats uh, of FSU and Oregon State this year on like third and fourth and shorts? Well, like yeah. obvious running downs. Do you want it just for quarterback stuff, or do you want to just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. obviously okay. yeah. Yeah. quarterback runs? I wonder how many of those we had on third and fourth and short. Probably not many. Yeah. But yeah, th this is it's dangerous. Now you've got a blocker here. There's 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 not enough people here. Actually, they have one extra blocker. And we know because teams. I mean, we're watching them do it to us. <laughs> like especially yeah. uh, especially in 2022, man. We consistently it, it's something that's consistently there so you got third and fourth to, took second and long to third manageable let's see what old dabs has got cooked up here yep there you go easy peasy yeah manufacturing easy completions for him i, I think will be important um kind of lull the defense to sleep they did a good job here with with a little Rub route, little switch route. Okay, I got a, I got numbers for you guys. Um, so for runs with quarterbacks on third or fourth and short, Oregon State picked up a first down on seventy three point one percent of those attempts, which was thirty third nationally. Florida State picked up a first down on half of those attempts, fifty percent, one hundred third nationally. Oof. Uh, the yards uh, per contact or yards after contact per rush, 2.4 for Oregon State, 1.86 for Florida State. Uh, and just pure number of attempts, Oregon State at 27 rushing attempts uh, on third or fourth or short with a quarterback. FSU at 15, difference between 123 yards versus 20 yards. So, oh, a little late, but got it. And I can tell you what, man, with, with how aggressive and I think how good Mike Norvell is with like game management, having somebody that can get those consistent third and fourths and just keeping that opposing defense on the field when they don't hit the explosive play on a drive. We saw it happen to Florida State a couple times this year, right? Like it, it can have an effect. He runs the ball like a good amount too. Like I'm trying to pull up just like his like actual just rushing statistics through a season. I think 
He was at 219 yards rushing this year. I think he was like at 500 last year or two years ago. Sorry, at Clemson. Yeah, he was at 545 rushing yards at Clemson in 2022 with seven touchdowns. Like he's run the ball effectively the last few years. It's a definite part of his game. And I mean, I'm just like I said, lava rock monster, but he's a durable guy. Like how much time has he missed? I don't actually know that. Does he has he missed any significant time due to injury during his career? No. I don't think so. Yeah, right? no one. I don't, 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 don't. Kev, what's going to need to change? And Mike Norvell's passing game to unlock that's a great some levels for yeah. I, I that's mean, my biggest concern is the the pass the passing game for Florida State needs to evolve a little bit. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna dive into it a lot this offseason. Um if if you look at just cursory stats, FSU's receivers just were not open. And frankly, with with the receivers you had on this team that there's not a great excuse for that. Um, so a lot of my time this offseason is going to be spent at looking why why that happened and, you know, e- explaining, figuring out kind of the, the background of what, what the offensive struggles were. Um, I do On a good got- offense with great receivers, too. It is interesting. They weren't running free too many times. That's a great point. I don't think they used a lot of motion. I don't think they uh, – did a good job of like running rub routes to try to get guys open and man coverage. I, I don't think they wanted to go over the middle of the field very much. And it'll be interesting to see if that was, you know, because they were constrained because they felt like Jordan Travis, maybe um, what didn't have the height to be able to see well over the middle of the field. They were, you know, cautious about that. Or if that's, you know, something that's built into their offense. Um, but DJ doesn't have the height problem. He should be able to have clear vision over the middle of the field if they want to hit the middle of the field, if they want to be able to get those deep middle middle shots. This is the guy to do it. This is the guy to do it. Do we think, uh, Adam, to your point, Oregon State, a lot of, lot of under center stuff, mm-hmm. a lot of zone stuff, a lot of zone play action stuff. Do you expect to see maybe more? Mike doesn't really go under center too much, but like a lot of pistol. You can maybe see like a lot of pistol with, with DJ. Like what do you think that are things that Mike does that's going to mesh really naturally well with DJ's strengths? <laughs> Yeah, I think – I'm curious if they'll run some under center stuff. They sprinkled it in a little bit this year. I don't expect it to become a staple of what they do. Um, I don't then, I don't expect them to all of a sudden jump on the Shanahan bandwagon and start no, a lot no, no, of outside no. zone with play, you know, with boots off of it. That's not who they're going to be, but uh, from under center anyway. Um, yeah, I would expect them to mix in – I would expect them to mix in some more um, uh, pistol stuff because it makes sense, especially if you want to operate off the run game with him. But out of the shot, I mean, he's comfortable from the gun. I mean, he's comfortable from from with the back to his side here uh, and, and operating off of that. It lets you work in some of the zone read game uh, with him if you want to, uh, some quarterback power stuff. Um, so I, do I think that the – formations and backfield setups are going to change a whole lot for Mike. Probably not. They're going to be kind of what they do. It's going to be the stuff that comes off of that. It's really going to be the passing game for me. Um, What do they change to play to his strengths? And this wide receiver, are any of them guys you would define as outside true outside receivers no. probably not no they're all the, but he didn't have a bunch of those ab like at oregon state and was successful yeah uh, by yeah. the most efficient he's been as a passer in his career and also like the younger guys florida state has that you feel like the guys you feel like are going to be factors for the most part next year like kentron portier bigger guy hiking williams mm-hmm. you expect to take the next step like bigger yeah. guy the guy you're most excited about in the freshman class elijah moore bigger guy so i think you already have some of those like in the pipeline yeah ready to go, even though they're not expected to be like a Keon Coleman or Johnny Wilson right. this year. Um, but getting the the speed, the the vertical threat, guys who take the top off right. the defense. I don't know if you have that and that, like, other than Ja'Kai Douglas, but uh, more valuable kind of being a gadgety guy. Yeah. Maybe being a, a consistent. I don't know. Player. I watched the the young man from Troy. Uh, Jabre Barber. Jabre Barber. People yeah, mentioned- I watched him. I mean, he reminded me a lot of Ja'Kai, like, they bring him and they run him across the field a lot and send him on wheel routes. And why are you shaking your head, Brendan? 
Uh, in the comments, uh, some people mentioned just Douglas Burner. Like, yeah, I mean, he's got some of the vertical stuff, but like, I think Jakai's really good horizontally as well. I liked him in the Wildcat yeah. a ton. Do Span. It's just yeah, not. It's another bigger guy, but it's the he's, in, at in this speed, point just not there. Destin Hill, maybe like I think he could be better, like a combo wide receiver, someone who does a lot of things well for you eventually, like uh, or maybe do off ball stuff. I don't know. I just it, it, Mike's offenses at Memphis, like when they were there, when they were clicking, like you had at least a threat of a of a vertical guy, like someone who mm-hmm. did put struck fear in defenses and like yeah deuce can can go vertically and and you know create pressure that way uh but he's also kind of a one-trick pony that's all he does you got someone who can push the ball or can get downfield uh, you're going to push the ball to them but they can also beat you in a few other ways i think that's what like some of these transfers that they're looking at kind of have that ability to do and it's it's becoming a it's very interesting in the pro game, like a team like the Dolphins, not necessarily elite size, but one of the best downfield passing attacks because of elite speed. speed yeah. So there is some there is some there are very interesting ways to utilize this because I want to think if you could take a bunch of quarterback attributes and put them in a vacuum and say, Mike, here's seven attributes you can pick like four. I have a feeling that that random generic quarterback would come out looking a lot more like DJ Uyangalale than it would like a guy like a Jordan Travis or somebody mm-hmm. else. So I'm actually, I think how we kind of saw more of a return to form for like Adam Fuller this year as like he's calling defenses more like we saw like at Memphis, which would be his preference. I kind of, I have a sneaking feeling that it's not going to look drastically different, but I, we might get some 2019 Memphis vibes. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of interested. Kev, do we have any other film that we want to look at or? Yeah, I have a real quick uh, highlight of them. Well, I found a real quick highlight of, of DJ against Utah that I'll pull up. There's a chance it gets taken by down by top, copyright bots. So we've kind of wanted to wait to the end to, to put that up. Um, but I also, I saw multiple people ask me this in the chat, which was weird. Okay. Kev seen a lot of people saying, DJ is a bad fit because he isn't mobile. Um, I would say that's not true. Uh, DJ, I think, is fairly mobile. I don't don't have a concern with his mobility. Um, I mean, I I think it's different than what Jordan Travis has, and it's not as elite as what Jordan Travis had, but Jordan Travis was special for a reason. Um, But I I think his mobility is a net positive and is about as good as you are going to get outside of, you know, some unheard of transfer. Uh, I think what? people equate mobility to speed, I think. And DJ is just a different type of mobility. He's a power runner. Uh, think think Jameis, almost like very awkward when he's running, like, but not going to run away from you, but likely to run you over, as opposed to Jordan, who's going to make you miss in, in the open field. To me, as a thrower, it, like mobility, escapability is just how tough are you to bring down? Are you tough to bring down because you're slippery and you're fast? Or are you tough to to bring down because right. you're a Maori statue that's been anthropomorphized. Like, like you know what I mean? Cause there was a lot of people bouncing off DJ in those clips. There was a lot of times where it would have been a strip sack and his arm strength propelled it through. So, and we saw from the stats that you had earlier, it looks different, but his ability to not get brought down by pressure and to extend the play. I I'm with you. I'm with both of you guys. It's a net positive. It just looks a lot different than what we've seen here the past two or three years. Dude. So uh, to add on to that, um, the the end part of this is, can you explain the difference between an RPO and read option? And so I have, I have something here that I think is an RPO uh, to kind of illustrate. I, I don't know who's talking about this because multiple people have asked uh, the difference between an RPO and a read option. RPO is exactly what's in the word. So there's a there's a run option and there's a pass option. And you're looking at one guy, usually this apex defender. So apex, the first guy outside of outside of the box, right? So so this guy, is he going to flow with the the pass to, to get underneath that, or is he going to come up to stop the run, right? So in a typical RPO, the quarterback would look at him, which it looks like he's doing, since he stays in to stop the run. You hit the throw. I'm not worried about DJ's ability in the read option game we've already seen him in some read options um and i'll talk about that more in a second i am worried about the rpo can he get that can he pull the ball and quickly flip that ball out accurately you can see this ball's a little high 
then that's less than ideal. A read option is simply a play where he either runs it or the running back runs it. And usually instead of reading a linebacker, you're reading a, a defensive lineman, usually a defensive end. So a read option by definition is purely a run play where a run pass option, the difference is the word pass is in there, is a passing play as well. I don't know why that's a question here, but that's the answer. I, I've seen that misnomer quite a bit, so that's some good educational stuff right there. Let's hit that Utah film. All right, Utah. I'm pulling it up. And this is from this year, right? There's a good highlight tape of him. And there's there. a chance we might get kicked out of here, so we say goodbye, potentially, right? Yeah. Maybe. I'm hoping because this is Fox that we're less likely to get. Oh, our new, our, our future broadcast Gosh, partners. Yeah. Yes, and this is, is a little bit for, less friendly. Forever. <laughs> Surprise. Um, so oh, however, <laughs> however much we get to Real see. Real quick, I just pulled up. Uh, this might be, it, it was on topic of what Kevin said with the R, run pass option, RPO stuff. This is from True Media via PFF. I'll take it with a grain of salt, like whether it is actual like RPO stuff that they're grading. This past year at Oregon State, he had a passer rating of 199.8 on RPOs. That was fifth nationally. Ooh. So How many eight, throws? Oh, mm, oh sample yeah. size. Oh, 10. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he made right. it count. He made I it recall, count. I recall an RPO slant that he threw that was, that was nice. But that's he's, where, he's his, capable. where he's best is it breaking in, not out. He yeah. throws the best ball when it's breaking into the middle of the field, not away from the middle of the field, in my it's, opinion. It's going to be interesting, man. It's like si like similar levels of like production, but it just Jordan and him do it differently. Attack in the middle, being a willing like power runner. It's it's going to you know be. Who I think benefits the most from DJ? Who running? I think Kyle, Kyle Morlock oh. benefits the most from DJ. Why you say that? Because I think that they like to let those tight ends work some choice stuff in the middle of the field. And it was crazy because two years ago, <laughs> two years ago, it's past, it's past Brendan's bedtime by like three and a half hours. Yeah, I've been working for 12 hours. This is just me being punchy and eyes being, I'm not high. But two years ago, they ran Cam McDonald a ton in the middle of the field and worked a lot of choice stuff with him. And he dropped some of them, but he also made some plays. And then this year, that all just disappeared. Like Jordan didn't look to it. Uh, I don't know why. Like, I don't. I would love to give somebody the truth serum and, and find out why the middle of the field disappeared from this offense this past year, um, as far as the passing game. But yeah, I mean, I think Kyle Morlock's a big body that could work in there. Or Landon Thomas, who's the, you know the very talented true freshman tight end coming in. Um, he'll be in early, so he'll be going through spring. But you know, another player I think that they're going to ask to play a role this year. I mean, those are athletic. Big bodied guys that can work in the middle of the field. I think that they could stand to benefit from a guy like DJ. Yeah. So uh, here's some passing bins just to add to that conversation. Um, so you can see the size of the box is relative throws. Um, so most of his throws are short, intermediate. He took a decent amount of throws deep. Um, but yeah, he, he seems to be a better thrower. Strangely enough, to his right, uh, Jordan was the same way. Um, and uh, at 25 yard range, those are, I mean, the yeah, boxes he, aren't massive, but those are really good numbers. He's, I think, he tends to throw the ball better downfield. Like when he can step into a throw, these guys tend to be a little bit more open downfield. Um, like he's not having to fit it into windows. Is that what those boxes kind of represent as far as like a route That's, pattern there? Probably a post, post, post yeah. But yeah, so that that's him. Um, that's kind of what you're working with. I, th these aren't bad numbers, and if honestly, if he can be pretty consistent on these short short throws, then that'd be nice to have. I'm with you. We're we gonna take our we're we gonna take our All chances right. there, big guy. Anything else we want to get to the people before we get we get unceremoniously dumped? I think we'll be okay, but we can take Me the too. let's take the risk. Oh, yeah, that's right because we love you guys. <laughs> I like this. Feels like right. feel alive. Feel so naughty. So DJ it's, highlights first you bourbon. Let's see this mobility. Yeah, I, I think he's 
and the potential to get him to go in a different offense to unlock even more like the success story this could be if things break right for Mike Norvell the feather in his cap like there's a lot that's on the line like for FSU with as it applies to like recruiting moving forward and stuff too to maximize DJ and it's there like there are NFL tools that we're watching there mm-hmm. can you harness it consistently can you surround him with the supporting cast that like allows it to maximize all of it it's gonna be interesting it is going to be interesting because that level of arm strength is eye opening. Like some of those ones that he's able to make with that pressure in his face for a coach that absolutely emphasizes passing downfield with a receiver core that is talented but young. Like there's there's a lot of good, man. There's a lot of good stuff there. I, I'm I feel like I'm more excited than I was before this. <laughs> what are you laughing at? People taking shots at Brennan's beard. What do you mean? It's a touch of gray. Oh, it's regal. Never mind. Don't kiss. worry about it. Just a kiss of gray. Yeah, dude. It was it was a lot different color 30 days ago. <laughs> <laughs> was that it? Was that, was that the highlight tape? Yeah, that was the highlight tape. Oh, that wasn't that worth the thing. Oh, my God. That was just one game. You did There fine. was four plays. That was they were really good. Closer to seven. <laughs> all right anything else before we wrap this up i want to i want to talk to to both guys on i guess the opposite sides of the fence i don't think any of these guys think that they're a bad player or anything kev how do you feel about do you still feel the same way about dj after kind of talking it out with three of your best pals you feel a little bit more optimistic or what are you thinking i think i i personally have a tendency to under appreciate his athleticism um I'll be curious to see how much that impacts. They did not, they didn't run Jordan Travis and it makes me skeptical that they, they would do that a lot with DJ. Maybe they feel a lot more comfortable with Brock as a backup uh, where they are in that room. Um, Mr. Moxie, his, his, his highlights look as good as anybody's. He, he can make any throw on the field. He, he's decent in the pocket, does a good job of avoiding getting sacked. Um, He doesn't turn it it over. He he doesn't tend to, which is surprising because he does throw some the occasional dud, um, but it, it's can you can you be consistent enough? And I, I think he's gotten more and more consistent every year. And you know, hopefully, he takes that the next step. Um, and I do think a big part of that's going to be how well can you surround him with a decent offensive line and decent wide decent wide receiver. But that's a different question entirely. And that is interesting, Adam. Well, Adam, what do you think about that? I mean, because Florida State, they have a better line than Oregon State's offensive line, and he made them into a pretty effective team. You've got the the entire, like, the, pretty much the entire nucleus, almost, of that offensive line coming back. Are you excited about the potential of DJ with the all of the people surrounding him right now at Florida State? Like, do you think he's going to be more effective at FSU than he was at OSU last year? Um. I mean, all the t- the talent level of I mean, probably what ninety nine percent of those guys is better than what he worked operated with at. Oregon well, you State. shook your head pretty immediately when I was I talking. Thought you were about, about to talk about the <laughs> offensive line, and no, I'm it's not part of it. Really yeah. encouraged about the offensive line for next year. I mean, it's mostly the same guys. They couldn't run the damn ball this year, so no, I'm not <laughs> fired up about it. Um, but I mean, yeah, the talent level of the guys he's going to step back into an offense with is certainly going to improve. Um, I think I've said what. How's Mike going to tailor things to DJ's strengths? That's one question I have. Um, Mike's done a great job of tailoring to playmakers, and I Every think he'll, yeah. he'll find a way to make it fit DJ's strengths. Obviously, um, we know that about him. He tailored the Jordan Travis offense looked completely different from the McKenzie Milton offense, which looked completely different from the Chuba Purdy offense, which looked completely different from the. Tate Rodemaker offense, the Brock Purdy offense. offense. I mean, all these, all these people that have ever played quarterback, if, if, if even in a game for Mike Norvell, it's looking differently. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely, so, that Louisville game with Tate is like the most extreme example of literally an in-game yeah, so like switch. I, so I'm extremely play. optimistic that Mike's going to find a way to make it work for DJ. Um, you know, and after that, I mean, there's a lot. You've lost a lot. You lost a boatload of production this year. Um, so there's a ton of unknowns too, uh, which is why I hope that they're taking an aggressive mindset in the portal to go out and find production to sprinkle into this offense with a guy like DJ. 
Um, you can get it there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you like Hakeem, you don't know about Hakeem. You like Dustin, you don't know about Dustin. So you're also taking faith that those guys are going to develop in a, in a full off season. And, you know, the, they, they certainly should. They're extremely talented players. So I'm, I'm encouraged and excited to see what those guys look like alongside DJ. I'd love to see them be aggressive and find a player or two to plug in there with him. Um, and then I hope they're aggressively looking to upgrade the offensive line. We will see. Brendan, you came in optimistic. Are you leaving optimistic? Maybe even more optimistic Ooh. looking at some of the uh, athleticism getting a little better year over year. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Feel good. Feel good. I think it, I think this is a solid B plus for Florida State. I think A A A to A minus for sure. Yeah, because a lot of times when you think those quarterback portal moves are automatic and then the rapper you took to the steak dinner doesn't get the quarterback to commit and then you're looking at dudes from the fcs not our problem we're in a different uh, we're in a different tax bracket (laughs) i think the thing that we haven't talked about at all and it's a soft factor is he this dude's played a ton of football games and i just was talking about how young this offense could be next year outside of your offensive line like your skill guys you're potentially looking at a a true freshman coming and playing some significant tight end reps for you if he can come in and get acclimated like the presence that he can bring to a huddle to calm those guys down, to have them be where they need to be, to organize things in the offseason, like I think it's invaluable. Um, I agree. It's going to be it's going to be really important for the younger guys. That's the real core talent of your team uh, right now. It's going to be really significant for those guys to have a figure like DJ, a strong presence to come in and say, you know, okay, this we're going to do it. You know, we're going to get back. You lost that with Jordan. I don't know if you could have gotten that from Tate. I don't think that they necessarily saw Tate that way. And I don't know if Brock's ready to step into that role either. That's a lot to ask of a of a true sophomore. So having a guy like DJ be, being able to come in and be a strong presence in your locker room is, I think, pretty important. That was a big reason why Florida State signed off on this to ultimately go ahead and take a transfer quarterback. So it wasn't always like a guarantee that they were going to, but I think they – Felt comfortable understanding that they were probably going to lose Tate if they pursued one. They did. Uh, the timing of how they lost Tate, I think, kind of only further validated maybe some of the concerns they had of turning the offense over uh, to Tate. Uh, but understand if you were going to take someone, it had to be worth the gamble of maybe like upsetting younger guys in that quarterback room, right? Of getting in mm-hmm. someone new and assuring that 2024 isn't going to be their season or making that less likely. Uh, and DJ was attractive because of Coach AB mentioned like maturity. Uh, and him being around, and he's someone who's failed before and then redeemed himself. And I think these are all valuable traits and, and things that are appealing to Mike Norvell. And I know quarterback wins aren't a stat. I think 30 and 10 in his career. Speaks volumes. Like he's experienced. He's won a lot. He's played on a big stage. Uh, he's played competitive power five football, power four now, RIP Oregon State. Like <laughs> just it, it's a move that makes sense. It feels good. There's some comfort to it. Yeah. Is it a home run? Personally, like, no, I don't think so. But how often are you getting a home run at, at transfer, uh, you know, at quarterback in, in the transfer market? Like, yeah, there's some some overwhelming success stories, but it's not not super typical. This is a guy who can help you have an identity. He can help young guys get better. Uh, he's going to help the locker room. Like, I, I think it's a win for Florida State. Your home runs are sitting on the bench. Yeah. And, Luke, Luke and, and that, there's, I'm at peace with that. Like, there's something to that that I think you're comfortable with. Yeah. Well said, boys. I got nothing else to add. And we speaking of home runs, I think we just knocked one out of the old internet park there. We survived the bot storm. We watched some film. We talked a little talked a little shop. I thought it was great. As always, this is a massive <laughs> awesome. This is a massive week for Florida State fans. We talked about they added DJ as kind of the centerpiece right now, the foundation of the transfer portal recruiting class, along with Marvin Jones Jr. They are not done. They are looking to add both offense and defense. And the only way you're going to know about it before your before your friends and you can pretend to be like a fake insider is if you're on Knowles247.com. Go ahead. Use our information and pretend like you knew it yourself. You wouldn't be the only one. So go ahead, pay the money, get on the board, and look cool look informed, look knowledgeable, and hang out with some of the coolest guys in the whole Florida State info, entertainment, slash whatever analytical biz. 
We love you guys. We will be back with a ton more content, probably a lot sooner than any of us are ready for. But guess what? We don't work for ourselves. We work for you, the people. And we love you, the people. Keep chopping. Thanks for sticking with us. Chop, chop.